doing some fun and casual gluing and collaging and stuff lately. And I thought I'd just turn on the camera while I do that. Uh, mostly what I've been doing is on the vinyl that I make the custom keepers out of. I have been making these little art tiles or inches or whatever you want to call them to include when people buy one. I'll just stick one in there just for fun. But don't have to use vinyl. I can use other stuff. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to use other stuff. And mainly I started doing this because my little scraps are getting out of hand. And these are little scraps that are like long skinny strips that you end up with and really don't know what to do with. You know, the, the scrapbook paper brand label things, um, the hard edges that we tear off of stuff that, um, you know, because when you're collaging, you don't want the hard edge, so you end up with a box full of hard edges. <laughs> And there's, you know, some tissue and just some weird scraps. They're, um, most of them are not really big enough to do much of anything with, but they're just excellent for collage. So that's what I'm going to do. I, you can use anything, like I said. I've got, I've been using vinyl. Today I'm going to use a cereal box. You can use some cardstock. You can use a big piece of uh, scrapbook paper. You know, one of the ones you have that you don't really like the pattern. Um, something a little heavy is better because we're going to be using a lot of glue. But it doesn't have to be cardboard. You know, it can be just cardstock is fine. And I'm using this is just Elmer's glue that's been watered down just a little bit. I don't know, maybe three parts Elmer's, one part water. I, honestly, I don't know. I pour some glue into here. I turn on the faucet. I turn off the faucet. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And my little scraps. And that is it. And then just a good glue brush. And I'm going to use one of these old um, stipple brushes that I have which will be back in the shop. I've ordered them. They're on the way, but they come from China, so it takes them a really long time to get here. But, you know, they're coming. And then I'm just going to glue. And I don't know what I'm going to do when I finish it. I'm, I might, you know, finish it out like this with some stamping. Um, you can stencil and doodle on it. I may just leave it as is. I might not even turn it into art tiles. I could do something else. I mean, this whole thing would just be a really cool big book cover, right? And once you get all the papers glued onto it, it becomes even more sturdy than it is. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, because I know y'all are going to ask. And I don't really care. I don't have to have a plan for what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to do it. And then the... Uh, the purpose for it will come later because this is the part I like, just the doing it. And, okay, let's just go. Some of my scraps I will tear up. Others I will not. I usually start with, you know, larger pieces so I can just cover some area and then later as I'm building layers I'll just start tearing them into smaller pieces. I just want to make sure that everything is glued down really well so I'm probably going to use way more glue than I actually need to. But that's all right and this is one of those where wrinkles and buckles don't really matter so I'm not going to fuss over that too much. What matters more is that all of the edges get glued down good. And I'm going to save my uh, lightweight stuff, you know, like uh, tissues and napkins. 
I'm going to kind of save those for the top layers and do mostly opaque papers on the bottom or for the first layers. But other than that, that's really as much thought as I'm going to put into it. And I am not going to put a whole lot. And I don't want super thick stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to use cardboard and packaging. And on some of these that have the, uh, you know, the straight edge, the hard edge, I'm going to go ahead and put it up against the hard edge. And just, because uh, it, you know, just makes sense. I don't know why. just makes sense. Just do that if you want. Or not. Doesn't matter. Now you can use a dryer glue that um, is not going to cause as much buckling. Something like a glue stick or a, like a mono multi-liquid glue that dries tacky. You can use those, but I really, for collagey stuff like this, I really prefer to use like a PVA based glue. Elmer's or Mod Podge or one of those because I'm going to be building lots of layers and I just want to make sure that every edge is glued down and glued together. And I am paying no mind whatsoever to color or pattern. I'm just using fairly lightweight papers. You know, like I said, no cardboard or anything too stiff. Because I am most likely going to cut this up and I don't want to make that difficult. Or more difficult on me than it already is. probably tell I'm just kind of going around and filling in the holes that I've created <laughs> you know fill in the blanks and again not not thinking too much about it and the closer I get to the top the more I can use more uh, lightweight papers like tissues and napkins I don't use them too much on the bottom because they tend to just kind of disappear you know I'll wait and use those on top. Painted papers are also a good um, option here. Good way to use up little bits and scraps of your painted papers. I was feeling particularly frugal this day. <laughs> I normally don't save scraps that small. Or maybe this is rosemary scrap because I think some of these are hers. <laughs> okay, once you finish covering it, you can just do all kinds of different things. You can let it dry, you can paint it, you can stamp on it, you can, you know, do whatever. I think what I want to do though is um, just kind of I really just kind of want to keep going. <laughs> this is very satisfying. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a napkin or a tissue, kind of a large piece, and add it kind of all over to sort of bring everything together. Let me show you. Okay, I've got this napkin. 
and I chose it because it was just laying right there. There's no particular reason I chose it. Doesn't have anything to do with the color or pattern. It was just handy. And I'm going to peel off the white layers so that all I have is the top piece. Then I'm just going to kind of add these in just little pieces here and there all over the place to um, help this come together a little bit. You know, just kind of random, but planned random. You know, that thing. Random that makes, kind of makes sense. I don't know if that's a thing or if that's just me. And I am going to make the pieces kind of small. I don't want to cover up too much of what I've already done because I like it. Kind of break up some of the large areas and it kind of pulls everything together a little bit. Now all we have to do is let this dry forever <laughs> and then figure out what we're going to do next. All righty. Now my uh, cereal box is dry. So I decided I wanted to add some paint and I want to do these colors of kind of reds and purples and oranges because they don't all play nicely if you blend them when they're wet, but they look good together dry, right? So I've got Deco Art Americana Bright Orange. Pansy Lavender, um, Alizarin Crimson, I guess, and Cinnamon Drop. So I'll use those. Then I have Sargent, um, Sargent Art Acrylic Colors in Cadmium Orange and Dark Cobalt Violet those two and this Daler Rowney uh, System 3 acrylic and purple so that's what I'm using I used them on another one a minute ago so I've already squeezed them out right here oh <laughs> And some uh, Deco Art Americana Multi Surface Neon in yellow. Because you know that's our neutral <laughs> that blends everything. <laughs> I've also got a couple of kind of sort of damp baby wipes or handy wipes if I need to blend. And I'm just going to start painting. Um, with maybe these reds. And I'm putting it on really lightly, like almost just watercoloring with acrylics, which, you know, I suppose you could use watercolor if you want. But I want some uh, opacity. I don't want everything to be real transparent, so that's why I'm not just using 
watercolors. And if you get it on, you know, too thick somewhere, then you can take your baby wipe and kind of blend it out. There we go. Very light, almost dry brushy. And I've got a little color happening, so I'll go back in here with some of this purple. I don't want that big blob like that. This gives you just a little bit of color coverage, but it still lets your paper show through. And that's what I like, because we use some, you know, kind of fun papers. You don't want to just paint right over them and hide them. And I'm going to rinse my brush just a little bit because now I'm going to go into orange. And just lightly swirl it around. I need a little bit more of this red. And now, I'm just going to put some of the neon yellow in here every now and then, just for giggles. Also a good opportunity to find places that need to be stuck down again.
having lighting issues today. I'm constantly having lighting issues, but I hope that you can tell how um, super cool that looks. I'll do some still photos at the end in case this lighting is just <laughs> is really as bad as I think it is. <laughs> it happens. Days I feel like I know what I'm doing. Other days I'm pretty darn sure that I don't. I just love doing this to use up weird random scraps and uh, to make cool uh, backgrounds or art tiles or something just to have on hand. You know, I can leave this hole like it is, hang it from a skirt hanger in my closet, and then later on I can decide, oh, okay, I can make a book out of it. I'll keep it like it is. Or I can cut it up into uh, tiles or, or inches or whatever, you know. But just having it on hand, I really, really like. It's almost just like having a you know, it's like having scrapbook papers on hand. I just really think that we should have a supply of painted papers or cardboards or whatever, just like we would scrapbook paper so that we can grab it when we need it, when we need a colorful something to put down. I'm checking for loose things that didn't get glued. If I do cut it, those little loose things can make your tiles start to peel if they're not secured. Okay, here we go. Now, I think this is beautiful as is, or we can just keep going because <laughs> less. It's not more, and more is not more either. <laughs> uh, uh, let me go see what else I can find to put on here. I'll be back. Yeah, all right. I just, I didn't realize I didn't have the camera on. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> let me try to remember what I said. Okay, I was talking about detailed line stamps are not going to be, um, not really going to show up well, so you want to choose bold stamps if you choose to stamp, uh, solids, things like this, you know, like this. Those are going to show up better. I did choose a couple of lined stamps, this uh, honeycomb and the script, you know, just for giggles. And I'm using the honeycomb right now. And it's not showing up really well, but I do plan to cut these into small tiles or um, ATCs or inches or whatever, and then uh, then you'll be able to see these a little bit better because you know they'll be smaller and you just get a better view. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna use the script and charcoal. Oh, see that just adds a little. I know, you can't see. You want me to move in? I'll move in. I can see better, but only <laughs> in one tiny section at a time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I could do some pen work, you know, with some paint pens to bring some of these out, make them show up better. 
but I don't think I'm going to do that till after I cut it. I'm wondering what this is going to look like. Oh, I really didn't think it would show up at all, but it does. Yeah, and then uh, after I cut it into tiles, if I want to do a little, you know, highlighting with paint pens, then I can do that. Oh, see, I just think that is a pretty mess right there. That's just a darn fine mess right there. And it's going to make some gorgeous tiles or ATCs or whatever, but I'm going to make tiles like this. This has uh, some Mod Podge over the top. That's why it's got a little bit of a sheen. And I'll probably Mod Podge over the top of this after it's dry. And I hope that gives you some ideas on how to use a, some of your, you know, really weird, kind of unattractive, oddly shaped scraps. Just glue those suckers down, slap some paint on top, maybe a few stamps, and cut it up into little works of art. Okay? Okay. That's all. The end. Oh my gosh, you have options. You can let it dry. You can add some paint and some stamping. You can... Uh, You cannot let it dry and you can add, I'm distracted because I'm peeling the glue off of my fingers <laughs> and it's coming off in very satisfying large <laughs> pieces that are like little glue finger socks. Okay, let me finish this so that I can pay attention.